This is Dr. Shannon Wong. I'm going to demonstrate in this 14-minute video three key concepts. The first being how we relift a flap for a LASIK enhancement. The second being how epithelial cells can grow underneath a relifted flap. And the third being how we uh, manage removal of epithelial cells that have grown underneath the flap. This patient had myopic LASIK in 1998. Uh, his flap was created with the Chiron automated corneal shaper with a nasal hinge. He's now slightly hyperopic, so we're going to relift the flap and deliver a custom ablation to correct his plus 0.75 diopters of spherical hyperopia. The patient is numb with topical drops. We use a sibyl uh, flap lifter to separate the adhesions at the flap edge. We can underneath the microscope uh, very easily see the flap edge and then just separate the periphery and then relift the flap to deliver our eczema ablation. I have found that there's uh, no flap that cannot be relifted. So this flap is being relifted 13 years after it was created. So it's now June of 2011 when we relifted and his flap was created in 1998. The flap looks even with the exception of a little indentation there at 2 o'clock, which is well outside the visual axis. We keep the bed dry and then we center on the uh, center our focus on the stromal bed turn on our tracker engage iris registration and deliver a very brief hypropic ablation We then lay the flap back down. Our goal is to make sure there are no epithelial cells that get tucked underneath the flap edge. I identify a little particulate debris at 6 o'clock, so I use a 0.12 forcep to remove that little filament so it doesn't inadvertently get tucked underneath the flap. I then just float the flap back onto a layer of balanced salt solution and then smooth it out. I try and align the gentian violet ink marks as I lay my flap back down. I'm paying close attention to the flap edge to make sure no epithelial cells are tucked underneath that flap edge. These are meniscus edged flaps because they were made with a microkeratome. So they do have a higher chance of uh, having epithelial cells growing underneath the flap edge. I find that uh, the femtosecond flaps that we create using the intralase laser have a squared edge and the rate of uh, epithelium growing underneath the flaps on uh, uh, relifting intralase flaps is much lower than uh, the recurrence of uh, epithelial cells on microkeratome flaps such as this one. So I use a micro sponge to uh, just make sure my flap is in good position and that there are no tags of epithelial cells underneath the flap and that completes the LASIK enhancement. This patient did well until one week later when he started noticing some blurriness to his vision and when we looked at his eye through the slit lamp 
we could see epithelial cells growing as uh, I've highlighted here in white. These cells were affecting his uh, refraction, which was Plano the day after surgery, and he became more hyperopic over the following six days. And it also affected his uncorrected vision because he was hyperopic. So we confirmed the um, elevation at the periphery and the distortion of the uh, uh, Myers on, on corneal topography and elected to relift his flap. So we use our Cybel interlace flap lifter to relift the flap, which comes up very easily because the flap was just lifted seven days prior. Once we introduce this instrument, we are able to see the epithelial cells, which have grown underneath the flap much easier than they were seen through the slit lamp. We do use a micro sponge to stabilize the flap while we use the 0.12 forcep to peel away the epithelial cells which are usually adherent to the undersurface of the flap. Sometimes they're also adherent to the stromal bed but usually the st uh, stromal surface of the flap is where I find the epithelial cells to um, be most abundant. So we apply the wet sponge. It stabilizes the flap so it doesn't torque or lift while we peel away these sheets of epithelial cells which look like a gummy residue. These sheets have grown within seven days after this patient's LASIK enhancement. Because we just placed the removed epithelium on the micro sponge, uh, we're able to conserve movement, uh, maintain our eyes uh, visualized on the uh, patient's eye. We don't have to look away. And with these two simple instruments, we can remove all the epithelium and fix this nuisance-type problem. I find that epithelium tends to regrow on microkeratome flaps much more often than they would grow on a intralasic or a femtosecond laser flap. Uh, my theory is that the uh, microkeratome flaps have a kind of a beveled edge and that does not inhibit epithelium from growing underneath the flap as much as a uh, square edged flap which is uh, the configuration of a flap that is created using a, a microkeratome I mean excuse me using a femtosecond laser our intralace femtosecond laser makes flaps that are shaped uh, with an edge configuration uh, more akin to a manhole cover these microkeratome flaps are um, they're like pieces of, pieces of paper that are laid one on top of the other. Uh, they're layered. The edges are more thin. Uh, on relifts, we will more often see some um, mild uh, melting of the uh, peripheral flaps on a microkeratome flap. But with an interlaced flap, we rarely see these things. I find that uh, epithelial cells will regrow underneath a microkeratome flap maybe 5 to 7% of the time in my hands. They'll regrow underneath a uh, uh, 
uh, intralace femtosecond laser flap on a intralasic enhancement maybe two to three percent of the time. I've never seen epithelial epithelium grow underneath a uh, intralace flap that was created de novo. I have seen epithelium grow underneath intralace flaps that were relifted for refinement or enhancement surgery. So we've now peeled away most of the epithelium. We're just working on any little particle of epithelium that may remain. We kind of pick at it with our point two forcep. We use the micro sponge to in increase exposure and to uh, increase visualization. Any little area of elevation, we'll try and get rid of it. We want the the uh, bed of the cornea, the edge of the epithelium on the bed, we want it to be as even as possible. As we lay the flap back down, we double check it by removing excess BSS from the stromal surface. We peel away any little tag that may be at the edge, which may want to turn underneath the flap and serve as a um, source of uh, recurrent epithelial ingrowth. We then float the flap back up on a layer of balanced salt solution and pay meticulous attention to detail, making sure the gutters are even, there's no epithelium growing underneath uh, the gutter, and that the edges are uh, as smooth as possible. One other trick I use is I'll apply, uh, I'll, I'll actually tape this patient's eyelid shut so they can't blink. And I'll use that tape. Uh, I'll always instill some antibiotic and some non steroidal on the eye, maybe a little. Um, well, I do not apply steroid uh, immediately, but I'll apply uh, an antibiotic like a fourth generation quinolone antibiotic and uh, a, a non steroidal like Brom Day. Uh, I'll use paper tape to uh, tape the eyelids shut so they don't blink, uh, and it kind of puts the eye at rest, and then I'll remove the paper tape um, 6, 12, or 24 hours later, and I find that um, the recurrence rate is a little bit lower when I do that. This patient ended up doing fine. I was very happy and there was no further ingrowth of epithelium after this case was over. He ended up, uh, uh, he was plus 0.75 before his touch-up. Um, he was uh, Plano the day after his touch-up and then he, uh, as the epithelium grew back underneath the flap, he became plus 0.75 uh, diopters hyperopic again and once these epithelial cells were removed, his refraction returned back to Plano. So my indications for uh, removing cells are change in the refraction, uh, discomfort on the part of the patient, um, or any type of visually significant um, epithelial ingrowth. So this concludes the case. The patient did well. Thank you for your time and attention.